I'm back at the airport going on another trip. This one to Lake Tahoe for the Tahoe 200. I'm gonna follow Rob again as his Triple Crown of 200s continues with the second race. They gave me the Jeep I needed with the features I need. So this is perfect. Uh, I'm in Reno right now and it is beautiful. Beautiful day out here right now. Uh, turn left on Harvard Way. Okay. But oh my gosh, turn this left is awesome. On the Harvard Way. Awesome Jeep Grand Cherokee. And the biggest thing is that it needs to have an AC adapter plug or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what it's called. A plug that you can plug like a normal laptop into and charge it because I'm not planning on staying in any hotels. I need to be able to charge camera batteries, uh, V-mount batteries, laptops as we go. Otherwise, this would be a very tough trip and I'd probably have to get a couple different hotels or drive out to like coffee shops or something just to charge batteries. Uh, but now I can charge as I drive. Much better situation. Oh, very excited. But yeah, that was like one of the biggest, that was like one of the biggest stressful points of this because they don't tell you what kind of car you're gonna get. You can't request, I even called customer service. It was like, I want to request this specific type of vehicle and they just don't do it. None of the car rental companies do it. Um, so unless you're renting like a super sports car or something, I don't know. But anyway, I'm here. I have some errands to run. Got to run to REI and grocery store. And I think I'm gonna go to a hardware store. In a quarter mile, turn right. I think I'm gonna go to a, go to a hardware store because I forgot this little tiny screw that helps hold my camera into the cage. Here we are, just got to Tahoe City, population 2017. Oh my gosh, here it is. First look at Lake Tahoe. This is Awesome, oh my gosh. Wow. It's huge. Okay, I just made it. Uh, I'm gonna jump out and get my camera going, film Rob, uh, checking in. Let's go. So this is insane right now. Rob is checking into the hotel that we all have for the first night in the Red Wolf Lodge, and it's actually in Squaw Valley, in the Olympic Village. Like, we're right at the start line right now. <laughs> He's in there, checking in. This is insane. Like, look at this. 
We'll end up parking in the middle there, in the parking garage, and then we're on the third floor. Okay, so this I'll come garage right here. Okay. Yeah. So this hotel is literally at the start line of Western States. Look at this. I'm right here in an Olympic Village. I had no idea that we were going to be staying here. We just went on a little walk, but just wanted to show you guys a little bit of where we are. I'm still, I'm still a little sore from hallucination, which was only like four days ago, five days. I don't know. So right there, right in that little space right there is the start line. And there's a road, you can see it goes up and around. That's the road that starts Western States. The reason why we're here is because it's only like 15 minute drive from the start of the Tahoe 200, which is the race we're actually here for. Um, but Rob thought it would be cool and motivating to stay in the Olympic Village. And when it's not ski season and there's no races going on, it's not too expensive. So pretty freaking awesome and inspiring. Did not expect to be back here so soon. I'm gonna head back up to the room now. Um, it's just out here calling my family, talking to them before they all go to bed. So, something that's not really cool right now is that we're in this massive traffic jam that goes for a long way. Uh, <clears throat> and it's giving us an estimated arrival of 9.13 a.m. Google Maps is, which is 13 minutes after the race starts. So I can't imagine what Rob and Julie are thinking right now because this is, I mean, unless something really Unless traffic really starts moving, I'm gonna miss the start. Oh, uh, so the car that Rob was in just kind of like hopped the curb and just kind of like drove off. Um, and now there's like a massive traffic jam up there. People are trying to do the same thing. So I don't know what's going on. Uh, almost zero chance of me being able to film all of that so hopefully he gets his gopro out otherwise we're not going to have any film of the start of the tahoe 200. so i turned around and i'm headed back to the hotel i'm gonna i'm just gonna sit there i'm just gonna i need to plan some stuff out figure out what's going on because yeah i wish i just wish i would have reacted differently when i saw them get out and hop the curb I just it, I didn't dream that they were just gonna like floor it past all of these cars I mean this is just insane so had I reacted differently and just followed um, I would have been with them would have got the start and everything but this is this is I don't know. I'm so frustrated right now. I'm trying to let it go. I'm just praying that Rob has the whereabouts to pull his camera out and at least get something from the start. Well, right now I'm headed to the first aid station. I uh, went back to the hotel and just kind of calmed myself down because I was just really frustrated but I'm off to the first aid station that we can get to now it's called Loon Lake it's like a two hour 45 minute drive but it's at mile 25 so it should take them like I don't know six hours or so all right so I made it uh, we're at Loon Lake Aid Station. This is the 25 mile mark. 
He's been running for about four hours and 15 minutes. So, still got probably, I mean, fastest possible time. Another 45 minutes to an hour. Um, more likely, we'll see him around two hours from now. I hope they're taking it easy. I hope they're not like really trying to push it since they were late. A couple runners just coming in right now. Nice job. I'm just walking off the trail a little bit. These guys are running fast getting to this aid station. <laughs> Keep going straight down. Straight down. Good job. Good job. Good job. Okay. This trail is no joke though. It is really rocky and not very firm footing. Good job. Nice work. A lot of people stacked up together for 25. It's pretty impressive. Good job. How are you doing? Good. Okay. So what's up? It's been about an hour and a half and out here on this trail still by Loon Lake. I did go back to the car and get my gimbal set up so I can follow Rob in um, when he comes around. Got a good spot I can see right down the trail down here. Um, it's about a, I don't know, maybe a quarter mile run back in. I just got this new gimbal. It is the Feutech AK45000 or something. Uh, pretty sweet. It can hold up to a 10 pound camera, so room to grow. Plenty of power for my a7 III and this Zeiss bodice lens. And the coolest thing is it's got this undersling handle. Hey! Good job. This thing right here, this undersling handle, you can like run with it held below. Gives you a lot better balance. One of the one of my biggest gripes and why I've never bought and kept one of these gimbals is because you have to hold it down here and the weight is just like it's not I mean, it makes films look so bad in my opinion. I think it's super easy to tell that someone's using a gimbal when they're holding it on the stick down here basically. And the camera is up top because it's like top heavy and it's just moving too much. But when you undersling it, uh, you really don't have that weight problem anymore. Um, it's just like carrying a bag or something with handles and get some really good shots with it low to the ground. It's nice. You'll see it. Right. 7,000 feet of elevation is getting me. All right. Is that the trail back? What's that? Which way is the trail back? Right here. Came in, spent about 25 minutes maybe at the aid station and then got out of there teamed up carpooling with uh, the rest of his crew and Julie's crew and we're gonna go to the next aid station that we can see them at which is the 100k mark like mile 65 or 66 it's called Sierra at Tahoe uh, we're gonna go scope it out to see what the aid station looks like so we know how much time we need to get in and out um, But they got 40 miles to go before they're there There's already a ton of people here like 
camping out, basically. We have hours and hours before they get here. Like maybe, maybe like eight hours. <laughs> but uh, we got our spot and it's beautiful up here. And we have just a little bit of cell service, like just enough that we can check and see where they are. Like one bar. So that's nice. I'm also gonna try and call my family while I'm up here and probably gonna try and get some work done on my Western States film as well. Just while we're sitting here in the parking lot, cracked open some beers and gonna have a good time over the next like eight hours while we wait for them. <laughs> well, good morning. It's 4.30 in the morning and uh, I think Rob's about a mile or two away from this aid station, so getting up, putting my shoes on, and I'm gonna get ready. Go sit outside. <laughs> this aid station really filled up. There's cars like just parked everywhere in the middle and everything. I'm gonna go check it out, see what type of food they have, chair situation, things like that. Most of the runners look pretty good. They don't look too dead yet, but they shouldn't. They've only been going for not even 24 hours. So I'm gonna go get the camera ready. Do some B-roll and stuff maybe. Yeah. Okay, so we just sent him off. He's got seven and a half miles till we see him again, um, which will probably be at least two hours. And the drive is only like 25 minutes, so we're gonna get some breakfast here, making coffee and some hot food. It's pretty Sun came up quick though. Still a ton of people in this parking lot. slow because the last thing I want to do is hit a runner or another person. Make sure runners headed out. Dang, this is beautiful. Yeah, I got a really good night of sleep actually. I'm glad that I converted the back to be able to lay down with my sleeping bag. I still just can't believe that I'm here right now. This place is just so beautiful. All right, we made it to the next aid station. This is called Housewife Hill. Aid stations back here. They're coming from the trail up here. I'm gonna go check out the aid station, see what it looks like. Don't wanna miss them though, but I don't know. I think we still have some time. It's only been two hours and 15 minutes. They have a seven mile stretch. I think it's gonna be a while. I just sent Rob off and uh, he's got a 17 mile section here. 9.30 in the morning, so oh, I need to, speaking of that, I need to, there we go. So I set my stopwatch every time he leaves and I can, then take like his average speed, divide it up, figure out when he's gonna come in next, 
and it's worked out pretty well so far. These uh, last two races, Bigfoot and Tahoe. Yeah. Gotcha. I'm packing up, getting ready to go. This is big. Dang. So here we are at Armstrong Pass aid station. This one was the hardest one to get to so far because of the road. Nice work. So this is Armstrong Pass right here. Uh, the runners are at 88 miles and they're coming into this aid station. It's a full aid station with burgers, quesadillas, grilled cheese, soup, basically a full restaurant, whatever you want. Man, this trail right here reminds me of when we were backpacking uh, out here in the Sierras two years ago, uh, just a little bit south of Mount Whitney, Cottonwood Lakes area. I've got a YouTube video about that uh, that you should check out if you haven't seen it yet. Good job. They've been going for 27 hours. Nice job. Nice job. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like we just kind of keep moving with all the people to these big aid stations. So Rob made it out of there alive. We are getting ourselves out of this nasty road. I'm glad I'm behind a string of cars because this would not be fun to be the one pulling over for everybody. Jeez. All right, so what's up? It's 10 p.m. right now, and the map shows that he's just outside of this aid station called Heavenly, which is uh, 103 miles. And it's freezing, freezing cold right now. I'm shivering as I'm trying to walk up this incline from where we parked so I can get in and see him. So Lori's with him right now and he should they should be coming in here any minute. But this eight station is just awesome up here. I'm gonna walk up the way a little bit. Cause I think he's coming real soon. So if the GPS tracker's right, I think I just saw the person who's in front of him go by. But I don't know. <laughs> because it's pitch black out here. I don't know if you can see that guy going up. No, you can't see crap. Neither can I. It's dark. <laughs> Town's down there. I'm on the side of a mountain, all alone. 
here come a couple people. I can see them now. Then we can run it in from here. Get some cool shots. And then he's gonna sleep for an hour and a half. And eat a bunch of food. At least that's the plan. He's in the white car right there. We're all gonna try and sleep for about an hour, wake up, start getting stuff ready, and then send him off. He's gonna eat again when he gets up. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I was just planning on being in the car again at an aid station. Figuring that out once we saw how he's doing today it was my plan. Um, I mean, if he's, yeah, just depends on whether or not we want to stay at an aid station where he's like just left, like we did this one, or where he's like on his way to. packed up and about ready to get out of here. Um, there was a bear last night that came and grabbed one of the bins we had outside of the cars. Uh, apparently we forgot there were some like Parmesan crackers in there or something and he really wanted them. Uh, so he almost got them but then uh, Paul scared him off and got a video of him so I'm going to see if Paul sent me that video I'm going to put it right here. So we just saw Rob off from we, mile 123. He's got about 30 miles before we can see him again. Uh, so I'm gonna take this opportunity to make some coffee. So we got a big old peanut butter going. Coffee, about ready to be done. This is a great breakfast, right next to the freaking highway. Just got the first really good views of Lake Tahoe. And I stopped on the side of the road. Um, so I want to see if I can get down there and get a time lapse or something. Jeez, this is amazing. Look at this spot. Oh my gosh. Yes, this is awesome. got it shooting on time-lapse mode. This is gonna be a really cool time-lapse. So I'm just going through Kings Beach right now and I was like, hey, I'll just pull over at this beach and see if I can get some shots of the lake. Super busy here, super touristy right now. Rockway Summit aid station. It's down there. Just hiking up a little bit, see if I can get some uh, maybe unique shots of this area. I don't know. This is the trail that they go up to get out of this aid station. Let's see what's at the top of this. 
So the thing with time lapses is since it'll be playing back in 24 frames per second, you need 24 shots for one second of video. So I've got it set to go up to 10 seconds, but at the very least I want to make sure that there's like four or five seconds. So I have to wait for like 100 shots. And they're every three seconds, so you can do the math there. Comes running right now. How's it going? Great. Doing great. <laughs> What's that? Time for a nap. <laughs> oh yeah, nap is coming. Three quarters of a mile outside of the aid station, just carrying one A73 with the Zeiss bodice 25 millimeter lens. It's a wide angle lens, just kind of taking some wide shots of whatever. Just having fun. Got a lot of time to kill during these races. <laughs> Thought that was a bear. So I've been wearing the Ultra Superiors 24-7 uh, during this race. And I also did the same thing at Bigfoot 200. Just wore these all the time. They're my favorite for hiking. Um, you feel the rocks a little bit more than you would if you're wearing like a Lone Peak or a Temp or Olympus. I really like feeling like my feet are contacting the ground. I don't know, like I just, I really like the ground feel of the Superiors. I love them for hiking. It's what I wore when we were backpacking in the Sierras two years ago. Okay, so it is six o'clock on the dot. His tracker hadn't updated in like an hour. So we're starting to get nervous as to where he might be. And it just updated like four minutes ago. Said he was less than a mile away. So he's gonna be coming up this trail over here and then getting on this road right here. But I don't see him. So I think we're in good shape. I'm just gonna head down the trail a little bit. And then follow him up. see in a good straight line so I can get ready for when he comes. Rob is in this tent right now getting warm. He's ate like three cheeseburgers already and changing clothes. He's got a long 20 mile section coming up ahead. It's gonna get dark in just a couple hours so he's gonna take like a 15 minute nap. And then the plan is to take like an hour and a half or two hours at the next aid station. It should be a really big parking lot. It should be a good place to get that done. The temperature's dropping so fast. It's supposed to get down in the 40s overnight. <laughs> California. Oh. No, that's fine. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> uh, sure. Regular burger? Yeah, Bacon that's burger. fine. Cheese. Yeah. Bacon cheeseburger? Vegetarian, yeah. Just a veggie burger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I have it. Is that the new one? Yes. That's okay. the one you handed me. Yeah, I fine. didn't swap that out. I'll remember. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. So, looking for his vest right now. I tell you, this $40 purchase I made at REI uh, for this down jacket was one of the best purchases I've ever made in my life. I can, I think I can say that. All right, just sent Rob off. Mile 155, 8.15 p.m. I probably expect to see him in about like eight hours or so. Rob is out there somewhere. Um, 
he's probably around mile 160 right now. And we made it to the next aid station, which is going to take him. Of course, the light turns off as soon as I start talking to the camera. You got 20 miles until he gets here. So we're just kind of setting up camp and figuring out like what we need and what he's going to need. Well, good morning. It's Monday. 6.45 in the morning. Rob's been out there for 10 and a half hours on this 20 mile section. So, he's having a hard time. But, we've got a sleep station ready for him. And I slept freaking great. I slept probably eight hours. Just got finished converting my Jeep from sleep to normal with all the bags and food back here. Camera stuff, water up front. I'm going to make some coffee now. And then maybe like a bagel. Packer just updated, looked like he's only maybe like a mile out and about to get into town. Looks like he's pretty much running on roads now, so he's gonna be motivated to go quick. So I'm gonna go out and meet him. Okay, so just as I was talking to you, uh, Rob did show up and he looked destroyed. He was messed up. Hallucinating a lot, um, sleepwalking, sleepwalking a lot. Like he would just all of a sudden be way down the trail, not know where he was. Right now, I'm backing up his GoPro memory card just to make sure we've got, like since he's sleeping, might as well, in case he loses the GoPro, or falls and breaks it, or it gets deleted somehow. Uh, we will still have the files. Yeah, this is a really good aid station. We've been here for like 12 hours though. Howie Stern's here. It's pretty cool. Got to talk to him for a while. Got the car running. Uh, so I can charge my laptop as it's transferring files. Which is cool because there's this plug down here. You can see. Just sent Rob off. Uh, forgot to bring my GoPro though. So, yeah, it was a long walk back. <laughs> I ran out about a mile with him and then just walked back. But uh, he's in really good spirits. That nap really helped him. Um, he's got 20 miles to the next aid station. And there's a storm coming. You can see it up there. It's coming kind of like, it's coming kind of like this way. So it might be hitting us for a long time. It wouldn't be ultra rainy if you didn't have some weather. So, yeah, packing up now. Um, planning on going and reserving a hotel now for tonight. Cause he's gonna finish probably, I'm gonna say like in between 10 p.m. and midnight. Um, so getting a hotel now, maybe we can drop some stuff off there too. And then head to the last aid station, which is at mile 195. Uh, and it's kind of up there in the mountains, and I'm not sure how much cell service we're going to have or anything like that, so we got to take care of this before we go up there. Within like 30 minutes, it started storming. So I'm sitting in here in the Jeep, dry, warm, editing photos. Uh, see, I see someone. Yeah. I'm going to give it a couple hours probably, see if the storm passes. He's got a 20 mile section. Maybe pictures that you guys will see, or have seen, a long time ago. Cause it's probably gonna take me a while to edit this video. <laughs> Holy crap, it is starting to snow. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's snowing. Okay, all right. 
I'm gonna see how close I can get down to the lake on this little path right here because that those clouds will be an amazing time lapse if I get down there. It's basically this much right here. That's what the camera can see. It's getting these clouds coming over top of the mountain and going like over the lake and it's just gonna be amazing. Time lapses take a long time, like this one's taking like 30 minutes. Last aid station, Stephen Jones. This is it, zero service out here. So, so Rob is like right here somewhere, right around this thing that says like Ward Creek. And then he needs to go down this road. And then this, I believe is also like a road like this basically. And he's gonna come into the aid station and then go out that way. And that's his last loop right there. This loop right there, and then he's done. Nice work. Whew, they look destroyed. 195 miles, and that storm just had to have taken everything out of you that you had left. Update time it is 6.45 p.m. on Monday. So that means in a little over five hours, the race will have, I don't know what I'm talking about. What am I saying? This is the fourth day. So in a little over five hours, it's gonna turn into the fifth day. <laughs> Oh man, Rob's in the tent sleeping. Apparently I need some sleep too. Well, just sent Rob off. He has 10 miles to go. It's eight o'clock at night. He's a really good chance of finishing before midnight because he teamed up with a guy that said he really wanted to go fast. The guy he teamed up with needs to finish by 11 so that they can get to the airport on time. So uh, this race is hard for everybody. Lots of people going longer than they expected. Um, but uh, yeah, now I'm just gonna go to the finish line and wait. Hopefully he finishes by midnight, but not counting on it. I'm thinking more like one. Sorry, Rob, if you see this, I'm giving you, well, four hours, maybe. We'll see, four hours, let's count on it, four hours, midnight. I highly doubt you can actually see me. If you can, that's amazing. And kudos to GoPro. Race is almost over. Been a long four days. It's just after midnight now. All right, well, he's gonna come anytime and we're gonna run down to the finish together. And yeah, maybe. All right, so Rob finished and we sat by the fire for a while. And then he started falling asleep and started getting really cold. So we, back at the hotel now and I'm just bringing in basically all my stuff I don't want to sit out here it's not that much though yeah slept good the room was nice but now we are gonna head back to the finish line cheer on some of the runners that are still coming in because the cutoff is 1 p.m. today. Crazy! My flight leaves at 3.30, no, 3.45. So I have to leave town probably about 1. That's it. Goodbye, Tahoe 200. It's been great. But it's time to go. Okay, so Reno Airport. Let's do it. Head north on California 89 North, Westlake Boulevard, towards Silver Street. 
Oh, this place is beautiful. I can't wait to come back here sometime with my family. Maybe run a race here. That's about it. Another couple weeks till the Moab 240. It's wild. Got some coffee because I'm gonna need it. It's a late night. Not landing until like 1 a.m. in Indy. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Me too.